increasing efficiency. UPS de developing a new super hub. That's a new strategy to meet global shipping demand. The company implementing artificial intelligence across the United States to streamline output. Joining me right now is the CEO of UPS, David Abney. And David, it is good to have you on the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. And when we talk about this hub, you are truly facilitating a new day for small and medium-sized businesses. Tell us about that. Yeah, this hub is really designed to expedite and to enable these small and mid-sized businesses to where with today's technology, they can really compete with markets all over the world. Prior to, uh, if you go back a little while, they couldn't do that. And so this hub is just part of the strategy, but it's our focus on small and mid-sized businesses. It is providing alternatives to these customers to where they can compete with the large ones. No, it's interesting because, you know, a small and mid-sized company may not have the funds or the, the, the economic uh, backdrop to have a warehouse, for example. Right. So tell us how that works in a practical way. You know, that is a, a perfect example. More and more, the competition is having to deal with being able to, to deliver to their customers within two days. That's much easier for larger companies that have distribution centers all over the U.S. or throughout the world. It was almost impossible for small and mid-sized. We just introduced a, a product that's called Where to Go, and it really is we're a broker between people that have warehouse space all across the country or the world, and then these smaller companies that need to store inventory so they can compete. And it has uh, gotten off to a great start, and we just think that's part of what we're doing to this segment. Well, shipping is such an integral part of the economy. It is an indicator in terms of where things are. So what would you say in terms of this global slowdown that everyone is talking about now? Are we slowing down in the U.S.? I think we have to be very careful. I think sometimes uh, uh, people can start to build bad news on top of bad news. Really, and I'll just give you an example of uh, the peak season that we just finished through December. Retail is being estimated across the market to have increased 5.6 percent. That doesn't really sound like a slowdown to me. Online uh, retail, 17, 18 wow, percent. So again, healthy, healthy numbers. And we think the U.S. economy has, has held up uh, reasonably strong. Internationally, there are headwinds, of course, and uh, uh, trade-related issues. But still, when you hear news that, uh, that there's a slowdown, there's talk about one or two-tenths of a percent. So it's really not the uh, kind of news that, uh, that some people are taking it much further. It sounds like you were pretty pleased with the fourth quarter uh, shipping numbers and what you saw in retail. You know, from a market standpoint, uh, we absolutely were that we saw that kind of growth. In uh, our network, uh, we have our earnings call next week, and I'll talk about our specific numbers. What I can tell you, though, is we just had outstanding service levels during this peak, equal to what we were able to do in the regular part of the year. And we were able to answer our customers' needs. So from a service standpoint, just an absolutely fantastic uh, uh, peak. Meanwhile, Amazon, its influence continues to grow. The online giant ramping up its own Trans-Pacific shipping service, reportedly sending nearly 5 million cartons of consumer goods from China to the United States over the past year. What's your assessment of that? You know, I really can't uh, tell you exactly uh, Amazon's volume from any part of the country over. I can tell you that they're a good customer of ours. We work close together. But people can associate Amazon with e-commerce. And e-commerce is a lot more than just Amazon. You have the other big retailers. But it's really those just hundreds of thousands of small and mid-sized uh, e-tailers that uh, that has allowed us to really be the e-commerce vendor of choice. And, uh, and we will continue to do that through our uh, product portfolio and through our technology. Oh, congratulations for that. Let me, let me ask you about that because the retail market has become so bifurcated, right? I mean, you see some areas like the mall areas not doing so well. But then those e-tailers that you talk about are actually seeing double-digit increases in terms of volume. What's behind that? Is this just consumer preferences in terms of how to shop and how to buy? You know, I believe it's going to, to continue to increase e-commerce, and it's just so convenient for many people using their mobile device to just order whatever they uh, are interested in, in getting. 
And that is why we're putting such an emphasis. And so when we talk about e-commerce, let me give you a couple of stats. From a European small and mid-sized businesses, only 5% export. And you would think it should be much higher than that. From a U.S., 1% of small and mid-sized businesses export. That's why trade agreements are so important. They would benefit small and mid-sized. And it's also why technology and technology that we can provide them will be helpful to increase their exports. So what you're saying is there's a tremendous runway on the horizon for these companies. If that's the kind of volume you're talking about, you're saying perhaps th these numbers will go up. I do believe that there's a big runway uh, for these smaller retailers, and uh, and that's why these, uh, when we talk about trade agreements, and just the most recent one, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the larger companies know how to export, you know, from one country to the other. The real benefit in this case was these small and mid-sized companies. And when NAFTA was originally negotiated, there was no e-commerce, so people didn't refer to it as that. And this agreement has got specific, got a specific chapter on that. So yeah. it's a step in the right direction. Even the unions were happy with the USMCA, actually. You're right. Yeah, there were, I think there were a lot of people now, just like anything else, you're not going to make everyone happy, right, sure. of course. But I think especially when you compare it to the downside, which would have been no agreement, this is a big step, and we look forward to seeing it ratified in all three countries. Has the government shutdown impacted your business at all just yet? You know, it has not had any direct operational impact. Our planes aren't being affected or anything like that. We do have empathy, of course, for the people that aren't, uh, aren't being uh, paid, and we hope this gets resolved pretty quickly. I can tell you, though, we haven't seen an economic impact but the longer it continues, you have to wonder just because of the number of people sure. that aren't getting paid. Of course. David, it's great to have you on the program. All right. Thank you. We'll be watching the developments. David Abney is the CEO of UPS.